Okay, hello everyone. Uh, if you were there this morning, you had this slide uh, already. So about me, I'm Dance. I'm a pearl monger from Paris. I'm also a dancer uh, developer. I wrote a book on pearl with three other fellows in French. This is my guitar player. <coughs> And I'm not good at uh, blogging, twittering, and writing things on Facebook, so you probably don't know. Uh, okay, this talk is about Curses Toolkit. So I'm going to um, to do the presentation on slides, and then at the end, I'll try to give some demonstration. So that's the fun part. So if you're bored, you can just take a nap, and then I'll wake you up when we talk about the demonstration. So I'll try to go faster. <laughs> Try to go uh, faster that we can uh, play with the code a little bit. Okay, so Kiosk's toolkit. I actually stand here because I need to read my slides. Uh, okay, do you guys use terminal? Who uses a terminal here in this room? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Okay, good. Do you know Kiosk's or n or p or Do you know what it is? Uh, yes. Okay. Who? Everyone? I curse, I curse no one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, just to um, just to make sure, Curses is a low-level uh, library basically to draw graphical-like characters or non ASCII and ASCII characters directly on a channel to make it appear like a graphical uh, interface so you can draw boxes, lines, and stuff like that. But it's very low-level. So do you know GTK, Kite, Dolly Express, yeah. stuff like that? Okay, so that's. Uh, grown up uh, graphical toolkits with uh, uh, you know graphics, mouse support, uh, pixel stuff, and that's cool. And uh, in Perl we have uh, curses with the capital C is the module which is a binding to M curses which is in C. So in Perl we already have curses and. My module is Curses Toolkit. So it's a toolkit based on Curses, so based on M Curses, uh, which is inspired by GTK, QT, uh, QT and, and so on. So the, the idea of this module is to leverage uh, Curses, which is very low level, into something very useful with uh, uh, widgets, windows, blah, blah, blah. So history, history. I've been doing uh, curses based stuff in the past for quite a long time. Uh, for instance, for Gentoo Linux, I wrote some applications uh, called Profuse and RT Client Console, which is an curses based console to RT, the request tracker program, using the REST API interface. If you don't understand everything in sentence, it's not a problem. We don't care. Uh, this is an example of a Curses program, so just for you who don't know what Curses is, so you know you have uh, nice looking things with colors, uh, text, uh, bold, uh, button likes, and so on. So that's not done in uh, Curses toolkit, that's done in, in with, with other modules. And that's another example. So that's the kind of stuff you can get with uh, basic Curses. Now, there are existing solutions to use uh, curses in Perl. Uh, so the curses module, which is just a binding, it's not, uh, it's good, but it's very, very uh, low level, okay? Uh, so you basically write a character here, write a string here, so it's not very um, convenient to, to, to draw, uh, to create very complex graphical applications. Curses UI is quite good, but it's a bit buggy, and uh, it doesn't have, uh, it uses absolute coordinates, and the uh, event loop is not very flexible. Curses widget has an horrible API. The event loop is too simple, and you can use widget forms, but that's too heavy and, and complicated. And the main issue is computing coordinates. It makes it hard. So what I mean by that is that coordinates computation, um, yeah, Basically, when you draw, when you design uh, an interface, uh, be it in curses or um, anything else, you have some stuff that you want to put at precise places, like a window, you know, or a menu bar, or stuff like that. And then, other things, 
should be automatically placed into your windows or your box and stuff like that. And these objects, you should not have to, to take care of saying it's at this exact position or it at, it's at this exact coordinate, all right? So basically, if you want a window to be uh, positioned in the center of the screen, then okay, you say, I want this window to be placed here. But all its components should not, uh, you should not have to care about their positions, okay? So that's coordinate computation. And all the modules that exist today, they require you to know exactly where to put this level, to put these things, and so on. And so you have to compute the coordinates <coughs> yourself. And I think that that's an issue, and that's, uh, uh, that's not how it happens in GTK, QT, or TK, or WXPL, where you have a set of packing and, and stuff like that. Yeah? Th that's the whole uh, point of my uh, research project, GCL, because I want to get rid of that. Yeah. OK. In Cursive? No, 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 no. Oh. What we talked yesterday is WX stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. It's good. Step forward, too. definitely. Okay, so Cursive Toolkit, the true toolkit with widgets and MM. Uh, everybody familiar with the notion of widgets? Yeah. Okay, so in the graphical interface, if you have an entry to input text, that's a widget. A label, that's a widget. Uh, a list, that's a widget. So basically, it's the components of your. Uh, of your graphical interface. So Cursor Toolkit is based on widgets. It has object oriented hierarchy. It has it managed events. Uh, so you can use keyboard, mouse, timers, and so on. So yeah, you can use mouse with your terminal. You see that. Uh, I want it to be fully themable from uh, from from bottom from day one because all other uh, modules that existed they started by saying, okay, I write the 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 basic stuff, and then I will uh, uh, think about themes. And at the end, I never implemented themes. So I wanted uh, to be able to change completely the appearance of the graphical uh, interface uh, in one, one line. OK, I use PoE, so PO, as an even loop, but the code is flexible enough to actually adapt to any uh, even loop. Uh, basically, I mean, I'm not going to describe what PO is, but uh, basically, to have a graphical interface, you need an even loop that waits for user inputs and then decide what to do and wait or for timers, you know, or for external uh, interaction. And so you need an even loop to go back and forth between your application and the, the, the external world. And so, Kirsten uh, Sukit, uh, uh, I have provided a, a pole based even, even loop but you can use, uh, you could write and use another one. And of course, as any other uh, toolkit, graphical toolkit like GTK, GK, and so on, it's based on a packing system. So basically you say, I have a window, and then in this window I want to pack this stuff, and in this box I want to pack another box, and so on. So you don't need to compute coordinates of things. So I try to go a bit faster. So basically, this is your terminal, okay? So with the, the, the title and the, the cross. So this is your XTERM or RSVT or whatever. And this is considered as the root window, okay? On Linux, you have a root window. And the concept here is the same. Your terminal, your physical terminal, is the root window, okay? And inside this, you will create uh, curses to keep windows, so you can have more than one. You need to have one. And uh, you can have one window that takes the wall space and which is invisible, okay? So you have a full screen application, but you can have multiple windows. And in these windows, you have widgets, for instance, a lab, okay? Everything goes through the theme and displays on the screen, okay? So it's the theme that defines the functions to draw actual characters and graphical characters on the screen. This is an example of uh, when you build an application, you want, so there is the root window. You create two windows, window one, window two, window two is empty, and in window one, you add a box in which you will add a border, in which you will add a label. And in this box, on the, on the side, you will also add a button, okay? And that is how you build your, um, the appearance of your uh, uh, application because of course you have vertical boxes 
and you have horizontal boxes, and you have other uh, kind of box, so that you can place your widgets where you want. That's an example of the widget hierarchy, so uh, that's not very useful, but uh, in, Is there a root window class? Yes. And there uh, must be only one root window? Uh, the, um, when you initiate, as I said, when you initiate process toolkit, you are provided with one root window. Okay. There is only one. And so uh, the root window is not visible here. And then it's up to you to create at least one window. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the window is here. And uh, all, all, the, all the widgets, you have to pack them either uh, in the box or directly in the window, okay? So you have to, if you want to display something, you have the root window, you have to create a window, and then you pack stuff into this window, okay? So this is the, the widget hierarchy with widget at the, at, the, at the top. Signals. So signals can come from keyboard, mouse, timer, terminal resize. When you resize the terminal, it's the resize of the root window, and that's a signal which, is, uh, which can be uh, interpreted by your application. So it's sent back and forth to the poll even loop, and to use the signal, then you just use the method signal connect. Okay, anyone has uh, used GTK? No, nobody uh, has ever uh, developed anything using GTK. Okay, because it's the same name of the method. Uh, okay, we have cool stuff. Windows, they have animated titles, they can be moved, resize with mouse, labels can be wrapped, justified. And I support tagging in labels, like in GTK, so you can have a text <coughs> which changes color, underline, bold, and so on. Entries to input text and shortcuts. So, Let's see how we uh, can implement the first uh, Curses Toolkit application. So as I was saying, you don't call Curses Toolkit directly because Curses Toolkit is, ju is just the renderer, okay? It, it, it's just what renders a frame of your application, basically. But because we need an even loop, then you do pro component Curses spawn, okay? And that returns root, dollar root, which is, uh, as you asked before, that's the root window. And then window equal, so you create a new widget window, new, and that's your window. You do the same with the label, and that's your label. Okay, so now you've created two widgets, but they are nowhere, okay? So now you need to add the window into the root window and the label into the window. That's cool. And the last thing you should do is set the coordinates of your window because the window is something you can place on the root window and so it uh, makes sense to give it a uh, strict coordinates. And here you set coordinates, 0, 0, 40, 20. And at the end you do poke kernel run, which actually runs the event loop and makes the wall uh, get alive. This code is exactly the same code as this one. Because what is very funny is that all these methods, so add window, as widget, set coordinates, and so on, they don't return any meaningful value, right? Okay? Add window, we don't need the return value of this method. And in these cases, all the methods return dollar set. They return the object they are working on. That means that actually root add window, that returns dollar root. And window add widget, that returns dollar window. So you can actually chain method calls, all right? So when I do component cursor spawn, that returns the root window, okay? From that root window, I do add window. And here I create, I, I create on the fly a window, so new here, on which I set coordinates. And set coordinates returns window, on which I add a widget. Here I create a label, new, and end of parenthesis. So that's 
uh, a similar thing. I mean, you can you can use this way of coding. Uh, that's per uh, perfectly fine. This way is uh, interesting because you don't need all these uh, uh, intermediate uh, variables like window, label, and so on. Okay, that allows you to create on the fly uh, your uh, your widgets. It's kind that of a dispatch table. Sorry, it's, it's, it's a kind of a dispatch table to represent the the code. Uh, no. This, this, form. this form is just that uh, set coordinate returns dollar self at the end. Okay, and it, it, this is just possible on method that don't have a meaningful return value. Okay. For instance, if you I don't know if you say window get size, then it will return the size and not dollar self. So okay. you cannot happen stuff. I didn't want to do anything magic, but still this helps a bit. Okay, well, that's it. We are going to do some live demo. Do you guys know uh, how much time I have? Like 20 minutes or something like that? 25 yeah. minutes. Oh, okay. oh 25. Yeah. Uh, I was too fast. Okay. So I have prepared a set of demos. Okay. Going to reduce a little bit. Sorry about that. So this is a real life application. It doesn't do much, but yeah. Uh, use strict warning. Okay, that's for the examples. So what I'm using is I will need a label window, vertical box, horizontal box, and a button there. Because I call them with uh, this, then they export uh, themselves. So I can use label directly. I don't need to use curses to keep widget level. Okay. And I also am going to use different themes. So that script is to demonstrate uh, different uh, how to apply uh, a theme. And so here, sorry. And here I just create shortcuts. Okay. So these variables are shortcuts to the name of the different themes. Okay. Then I have here. I have the main function. So we use curses. Here we get uh, we get the root window. So we say, okay, please spawn uh, an application. Okay, that's a, a optional configuration to say that I want the, the, the theme to be blue and white. Then I define one, two, three, four buttons. And I say, okay, window one, so that's my window. It's a window, so curses window, new, okay. And then set title, so that's the title of my window. And I set the coordinates to be x1, 5%, y1, 30%, x2, 95%, and y2, 70%. What's cool with Curse Toolkit is that you can define some coordinates as being percent of the root window. Okay. So when you resize the terminal, you <coughs> resize the root window, and you see that the, the, the window will resize itself automatically to keep these so yeah, that's Nick, uh, can two windows overlap? Yes, of course. That's the whole purpose. Oops. Sorry. So then I add this window on the root. So root add window window one. And then I add all my widgets. So let's get it one by one. Okay, window one, add widgets. I add the virtual box, uh, vertical box, sorry, in which I pack a new level which I justify at the center, I set the text, click this button to change the theme, okay? And I pack it with an expand to one, so that takes the whole uh, space available. And in this V box, 
there, I also pack at the end a horizontal box, okay? So e box, a label, and then a horizontal box where I will pack button one, button two, button three, button four, and these new buttons, they are button new with label, okay? So I create on the fly buttons with a label default, blue, white, yellow, pink, and they are all expanding. And at the end, I think, yeah, what is missing is that button one, I want to connect the signal clicked to this code. What does it do? It uses window one to set its theme, new theme to default. And the one here means that it should apply the theme to the window and all its children recursively. Okay, I do the same for the all other buttons. And so, these buttons will just change the things. Okay, let's run the. So, do I think I have so Okay, maybe this one. Okay, so unfortunately I'm using a crappy terminal, so the vertical uh, bars are not really connected, okay? But if I show it in this terminal, you can see that uh, it's much nicer, okay? So that's the um, uh, default Mac terminal. The only problem with this terminal is that it doesn't support mouse. Okay, so mouse interaction are not usable, so that's why I have to use this. Uh, yes, me, uh, you're using it uh, on the Mac. Yeah. You can use it also on other uh, yeah. operating systems. You can also with the DOS. Uh, uh, you can use it on Windows, yes. You can use it everywhere there is Perl and Curses. Okay. And it's available, I've checked, it's available. Free DOS should have Free DOS should have yeah, uh, uh, it's available on, on Linux, uh, on Mac, and on Windows with Active State, uh, yeah. it is available. On Open Strawberry, is the default. Sorry. sorry? For OpenBSD is the default scripting language. So. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so it, it works. Yeah. It's it's it works on every platform. So, as I was saying, the cool thing is that actually it's available also for Android. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool. There's a package that swallowing Python and parallel and Okay. So as you can see, when I resize the terminal window, uh, our internal window here gets gets resized, okay? Because I've specified the, the coordinates in percent. When I do resize the, the window, you can see that it, it, it properly resizes which is nice. And when I start resize it a bit too much, the title cannot fit, so it starts to, uh, to animate a little bit. If I click on tab, I can actually uh, switch the, the focus from one button to the other one. And if I hit the bar space, then I can change the theme, okay? So you can see that I have changed the theme from, and that's, that's you know eye candies and so on. So I, I have switched the theme from blue white to default. You can see that in blue white the buttons have three lines of height, okay? Because there is this border. Okay? And if I click on uh, space or I can actually click with my mouse, yeah, the theme is changed. Okay? So in this thing, the buttons are much smaller, right? So the, and, and, and it's only black and white. And the title is not center, but it's put on the left and very small length, so uh, it kind of goes crazy because it tries to animate it. Um, and and that's very important that the buttons have not the same size because it shows that uh, you didn't have to specify at any point what the coordinates were. Okay, we specify only the size of the window, but inside it, it's all calculated, and the theme decides of some part of the uh, display of the widgets. 
So now that I have a mouse, I can actually, yeah, I, I'll show you the other thing. So if I click on yellow, okay, that's bright yellow. It's just to test. And here also I have uh, specified two uh, as width of the border, okay? And if I click on pink, yeah, it's very bright. Okay, anybody knows book? The guy from Paris? Yeah. 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 Okay, he loves pink, so I made this thing from him. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get back to blue white. Now we have a mouse, and with the mouse, actually, you see my cursor? Okay, yeah. I can go here, click and hold on the title, and I can move, and I can drag the window around. Yeah. Okay? And I can do the same here on the bottom right corner. If I click, I can actually resize the window. Okay? So that is really what defines for me a real graphical uh, interface, that you have a keyboard and mouse, and all this stuff will be recomputed uh, uh, to, the, to the user interaction. Okay, let's see if we have something else. I was talking about Windows. So this is a, <coughs> a stupid example with five windows, and here I can click once and you know focus that window and I can move it around. I can resize it and I can uh, switch the focus on the window, okay? So it's not just um, an empty space where you write characters. It's really a root window plus as many windows as you want, and you can play around with it. Uh, let's see. Okay, packing. Uh, excuse me, uh, when you, um, if you resize the terminal, the fonts uh, resize. Uh, no, not in this. Uh, no, if I resize the terminal, in this terminal it doesn't resize the font, but um, there is less characters available. Okay. 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 So here the terminal is probably you know 120 <coughs> uh, characters, uh, and here it's 200. Okay. So the car all coordinates are uh, with the percentage. Uh, not in this case. That's a good question. In this case, I have said, well, like, uh, let's have a look at the code a little bit. In this case, okay, here yeah, I, I, I said I do a loop, so for each, so I do a loop yeah. from one to five, and here the coordinates are not in percentage, so I really want them to uh, to be placed uh, and don't move. What is that? Uh, is a cursor, you decide cursor size that you need? Yes, okay. uh, uh, character size, yes. Character size. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a good question because, yeah, at some point you, you may want to speak in, you know, centimeters or, you know, in real dimensions. The issue is that text, uh, I still use curses to display text, and uh, curses put one letter in one, uh, one, one cursor, you see yeah. what I mean? So I, I have to stick with, uh, with a character as a unit of measure. And so in this case, I don't use percentages, so the windows, they don't move when you resize the root window. Um, so now let's talk about uh, packing. So you've seen that, okay, that's it. I'm going to show you in this terminal because it's much nicer. Okay, so as you can see here, it's a simple window. And okay, just one note about the, the, the uh, window. It's very easy to uh, create a window, and if you set coordinate 0 to 100% and border equal 0, then your window takes the whole space. Okay, and in this case, uh, you can. So you can have a full, a full screen application. Or you're not uh, obliged to have uh, many uh, windows. So in this window, I have added a vertical box in which I add this label with the border. 
Uh, beneath it, I add a uh, horizontal box, okay? It's two other uh, borders and others. And here the same, but here I put it with expanding and no fill, and here expanding and fill. And here this is with no expand, uh, sorry, this is with expanding and no fill, and this is with no expanding, no fill, okay? So that's just to show you the different uh, uh, options that you can do when you pack things. So here you don't see it really, but I will show you the next demonstration, which is the same except that it moves. Okay, that's the same thing, and I make it move. Right? I, I resize, in this case I just resize the window. I don't take care about the coordinates of all these, these, these borders and, 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 and boxes. But because I have said that uh, this, this is packed, to take the least place possible. So when it fits on one line, it takes only one uh, one character of height. Okay, but when the the label is too long, then it wraps because the label knows that it can wrap. I, I could have said label, please don't wrap, and it would have been checked. Here you can see that I have an expanding border, but no fill. Okay, uh, that means that it tries to expand vertically, but not horizontally. So it doesn't need more space on the width to display this text, so that's why here there is an empty space. Okay? And here it's the same thing except that there is the fill option and you can see that it keeps growing even when everything fits on one line. All right? And here this is uh, expanding without fill but the other way around and it doesn't eat the space uh, vertically. Whereas here you can see that these boxes eat all the space vertically as well. Okay, so this is very similar to the GTK uh, packing uh, mechanism, where you have exactly these two uh, options, and I think that's also called uh, expand and fit. Now let's have a look at a more realistic example. So here I have. Uh, can you see properly or do you want me to make it? No, okay, let's, let's, let's see. Uh, here I have a window. And yeah, I should display it in this other terminal. Okay, so here I have one window and here I have another window. This window is just an example to show that uh, this is only one label, but you can use uh, some kind of uh, markup language, very simple markup language, like uh, um, in, in brackets B to mark it as bold, or U to mark it as underlined, uh, red background, you can change the color and so on. So this is just one label, and you have quite a lot of uh, possibilities. And here we have a window, on the left we have a label, and here we have an entry, okay? And here I have another label, and I have connected the two so that when you enter something here, when you press the key in the entry, it will um, send uh, the signal it sends will be caught by this uh, label, and it will then say, "Okay, you just wrote this letter." Okay, so this is to um, demonstrate the signal uh, signal uh, feature. And here I have a vertical pane to separate uh, the space, another level, and yet, yet another separation. And here this is what. So I'm going to move that away. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I, you can see that if I put my mouse here and I click, and I have the button clicked, then it turns blue, blue sorry, and I can move the window and release. And you can see that you know it moves. And if I do that, you can see that this level has wrapped properly, and the entry has reduced itself properly. So it's really uh, down to everything is reclined. Here I can do the same, and this level will be near, will be nearer from the from the button. Okay. So of course, if you do that, I think yeah, you don't see anything. Other graphical uh, toolkits. Uh, have uh, have uh, code that says, oh no, I don't allow you to go that down because otherwise I will not be able to display the button. So I should work on that. Shell. Okay. 
And okay, now let's click on the entry. So it has a focus. If I click on enter, I enter into the entry. And now I can type hello IPW. And you can see that here, this gets updated as soon as I do something into the entry. Okay? And this is a full featured entry, meaning that if I write stuff, it will scroll eventually. I can go back and I can delete things and so on. Okay? And things are updated. Uh, below. So that's quite interesting. I'm going to show you this bit of code. So we are not going to look at everything. It's not very long. Though. Yeah. Okay, so here, for instance, is an example of a level with uh, markup languages in it. Oh, you, you implemented also Spam, and uh, yes. we have uh, CSS3 on. Yes. Oh, cool. Ah, okay. Because uh, I remember the, the old markup with uh, B, E, yeah, and yeah, U yeah. in that, but uh, simple yeah. without style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know, it's crap. Um, no, no. The thing is that uh, I did that very quickly uh, because uh, a friend of mine asked the feature. And uh, that's present. Uh, that feature exists uh, in GTK. And I said, mm, why not have you know a stupid markup language you can use? Uh, but of course, um, there should be some kind of, of styling. The issue is that, for instance, for styling widgets and, and how they are displayed, then we have themes, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 all the, the theme and the theme structures. So uh, I don't think uh, this is uh, powerful. So maybe uh, yeah. exaggerated uh, for, the, for the courses. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, this is definitely a yeah, a clunky stuff uh, because yeah, I don't know. It was more a bit of experiment and then uh, quickly hacked. But and I, I looked at uh, GTK and they have this stuff, so I said, okay, I'm going to implement that. But of course, in GTK, and in GDK, you have uh, a more, more powerful um, Pongo related no. things yeah. with all the fonts and so on. So, but that part, of course, I have not. And I'm not really sure what to do because we are limited in uh, possibilities because you know it's curses. So one character is at one place. You have limited colors and limited uh, ball. So I don't know. But uh, yeah. I have to probably write this thing because uh, it makes level a bit slow as well. So oh, for me, is is already beyond uh, uh, what uh, I need. Uh, so yeah. when, when I when I don't so here you can see you have this band stuff and you can say bold or underline and, and, and so on. And here you can change the foreground color. Alright, so now... Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. An example of a progress bar. So it's just to demonstrate the feature. Okay, it's a progress bar. And I can click here back to decrease. Oh, that does work. Yes, it works. Okay, so that's a standard, that's standard uh, horizontal progress bar. And I've also implemented a vertical scroll bar. Uh, progress bar, sorry. I'm not sure if it's useful or not. But, you know, it was just it yeah. was easy to implement. So. Yeah. Oh. Maybe uh. it's useful. Um, okay. More useful is this thing. So this is quite. Uh, took me a while to implement because uh, at first in the design I, I I didn't really think about it, but and I said, oh, I do that later. I can never do that. Um, scroll bar, uh, sc scroll, scrolling area 
are difficult to implement uh, unless you think about it in the early stages. I didn't, so it was a bit hard. <laughs> so here I have a window, and it displays a border and a ladder, but I have put that into a scrolling area. Okay. And, uh, wow. and uh, so this window has not enough space to display the content. So of course it's truncated, and here I have, uh, okay, it's not very nice because I just implemented it, but here I have uh, drawn uh, scroll bars, okay? And I can resize the window so that it fits a bit more. For instance, I, okay, the edge fits uh, vertically, so the, the, the scroll bar on the right disappears. And I don't think I have the place on this screen, the rooms are in this screen. Uh, come on. But I tried to make the other scroll bar disappear. Now it's still. Ah, there we are. Okay, so the scroll bar can disappear automatically. Uh, Go back to here. The scroll bars that don't display yet where we are into into the the, the scroll area. But I need to do that. But that be finished. Uh, you can click, of course, on the scroll bars to scroll. You go up again, and here I can click and scroll stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's. That was quite a lot of work, actually. But um, I'm quite happy. Yeah, there's a small bug. I scrolled too much, and yeah, it comes back. Um, and this is going to allow me to unleash the, the, the final features of what's missing in uh, Curses Toolkit. So, yeah, excuse me, yeah. uh, is it possible to scroll the root window? Uh, no. No, it's not. And I don't see why you would want to. Because the root window, do you have a Linux uh, laptop or desktop? Yeah. Or, or on your computer, you have the desktop. Yeah. Uh, if you're on Windows, the desktop is the blue screen uh, with, with your start menu. Yeah. Okay. You cannot scroll that. Can you score it? No. no. On Linux, it's, it's the same. On Mac OS, uh, on Mac OS, it's the same. So the root window is not something you can score. However, you can create one window. You make it invisible. You make it fill the whole root window, and you add a, a scroll, a scrolling area in it. And here you have it. It can score. Okay. So that's uh, yeah. Uh, can I put windows inside window? No. Because that doesn't make any sense, does it? Put windows into windows. What what uh, what's missing? Actually, I see I see your point. Is uh, how's it called? In the last uh, courses, uh, we we have uh, windows. Yes. Uh, in uh, yeah. courses uh, UI. Yeah. Yes. Uh, UI. Courses UI. Yes, there yes. is this thing, and uh, and yeah, yeah, it's it's also because uh, you you define uh, area to draw. Uh, uh, with uh, with the different windows and, uh, and yeah, yeah. I, I've seen in, in there is a, an example uh, in, in in the in the module yes. of courses UI where you have the similar windows that uh, uh, you can focus uh, between them uh, and so on. So so in toolkit you you have to use uh, the vertical box uh, or horizontal to to uh, to draw different areas. Uh, yes. In uh, exactly when you have your window, mm -hmm. you can put only one thing in it. Yes. Either you put a label, for instance, and that's it. You cannot put anything anymore in the window, or you can put a V box or H box, okay. which can uh, receive more things. Yes. Okay. So I, I can build the uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. You cut your space, and you have H box, V box, and uh, the pane, the, the you know the the, the draw the vertical and horizontal stuff that you could move. Is, uh, okay, so that's also a box with two children. So no more window, but the uh, box. Uh, yeah, so yeah. And yeah. what is missing? And window into window refers to I don't remember. X monad type. Sorry. X monad. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and what uh, uh, what what is missing is uh, tables, for instance. In GTK, you have a, a, a packing window, which is uh, a tables where you split your spaces not in vertical and then horizontal, but in squares. You know, okay. and so you so they are aligned uh, with each other, and they are. Uh, and you have spaces where you can put freely some uh, widgets, for instance, or and there is uh, so um, things where you can draw uh, directly pixels and lines and so on. So there are a lot of packing windows, uh, packing widgets, sorry, that uh, are missing, of course. Okay. But uh, yeah, I've, I've built the important ones, and especially uh, the scrolling area. And now with uh, you can do a, a uh, standard application, and uh, but everything is there now to build up more more things. And what's missing? I think I have a slide on that. Yeah, what's missing is a dialog box, of course, because that's very easy to implement. I haven't yet implemented it, but uh, it's a window with a B box with a, a, a label and an OK button. And here that uh, here you have an OK dialog box. If you add uh, a more button, then you can do a OK cancel or an error message uh, box or something like that. So that's uh, what I will add. I don't have menus, and I don't have list and three widgets. Uh, but these are now possible now that I have the scrolling uh, areas, because I'm going to be able to scroll and so on. And in other modules, you I don't think you can have a list, for instance, of a label on one line, and then uh, something on two lines, and then a border, and and a button, and then an entry, and so on. And in Curses widget, uh, in Curses toolkit, you will be able to have that because a list will just be a, a, a widget which packs children, wherever they are, and recomputes all the coordinates and add a scrolling uh, area on top of it. Okay, so I will be able to have um, to have. Um, List with uh, non-homogeneous children in it. If that makes sense. Yeah. All right, uh, and I need to improve the speed. Okay, do you have any questions? <coughs> okay, then I will finish with this last slide. I think. Yeah, I'm working at uh, Webrama. We do advertising stuff on the internet. We are based in Paris and we are hiring expert per developers. So if you are one of them, if you know one of them, if you're looking for <coughs> a new job um, which is would be based in Paris or maybe remote, I don't know, uh, please contact us. Uh, we are paying well and we are uh, taking care of relocation or working remotely and so on. Um, that's it, I guess. And Thank you.